We're about to break down the latest Mel Kuyper 2023 NFL Draft Big Board. But if you want even more NFL Draft content right here on Chat Sports, all you have to do is subscribe. We are live for the NFL Draft. We have a blast, and we do all of the prep work required, both in videos and in research. So if you want good NFL Draft coverage all for free, hit the subscribe button right now. Let's get into Mel Kuyper's latest 2023 NFL Draft Big Board. Updated, by the way, uh, they made some changes, including... A new number one, Jalen Carter, the Georgia defensive tackle, has usurped Will Anderson, uh, who's number two on this list out of Alabama, the SEC boys. It might not be number one overall picks. Quarterback, of course, plays such a big role in those needs and whatnot. But Carter jumps Anderson. I have not finished my profiles on either of those guys. I'm pretty close on Anderson since I assume he's not going to play in the bowl game, but I also want to wait for combine testing too. I think on most people boards, in some order, those two, Carter Anderson, will be your top two prospects. Number three up a spot is Will Levis, the Kentucky quarterback, who, um, if we're being honest and objective, didn't play that well uh, this past year. Kentucky, a new scheme, a lot of key losses on offense, new coordinator, I should say, but I don't love Will Levis. I'm, I'm really not that high on him. I don't think he's the best quarterback in this draft. I don't think he has the best tools in this draft. Though he is more developed than the guy with the best tools. We'll get that in a little bit here. But what do you think? Is Will Levis the best QB in this draft? Y for yes, N for no. Number four is Bryce Young, the Alabama quarterback. He's a tough... Some teams will not like him because he is so tiny, but he makes a lot of plays out of structure, kind of got some uh, super mini, both from like talent and size and arm strength and everything, mini Aaron Rodgers vibes from the way he makes plays out of structure. He checks in at number, f at number four on Kuiper's big board. And the most shocking change is Jackson Smith and Jigba. From last night, I covered this in like October, I think, or maybe it was November, one of the two. In uh, Jigba jumps up from 16 to 5 having played zero snaps since the last time Kuiper did this. And that just, I got to be honest, Mel, that doesn't make any sense to me. There's nothing that Jackson Smith and Jigba did that should have resulted in him jumping from 16 to 5 on your board. You're telling me that 11 other players played worse and that's why they fell? That, that, that does not pass the smell test, and it's frankly very confusing. I like JSN. Don't get me wrong. He'll probably be a first-round pick, but 16 to 5... Maybe Kuiper talked to someone he trusts, since that's how the ESPN guys tend to do their things more and more. They're always a eh, media in general is always behind, but I don't, I don't get that one at all. So who is your number one 2023 NFL draft prospect? It's the pinned comment on today's video. So if the ad break comes here on YouTube, take advantage of it. Head down there and drop that prospect name. Number six is Peter Skaronsky. No change here for Kuiper. Arm length will be a big concern for Skaronsky, kind of like how undersized is for, for Bryce Young, but. He's a, a, it's another Rashawn Slater debate all over again. Number seven, C.J. Stroud falls from three to number seven. He's quarterback three, by the way, for Mel Kuyper. Uh, he's still got a college football playoff push, though, to see if he can boost his draft stock again. Number eight, no change here, is Bijan Robinson, the Texas running back. He is a top ten prospect, I think, for most draft people. The issue is... Where does he go? He's a running back, and those players are not typically valued the same way their talent level says they should be. So I got no complaints with him in the top 10. Quinton Johnston, who is was number 20, skyrockets up to 9. Kind of feels like Kuiper wanted to just make some big changes at wide receiver. I, I'm a big fan of Quinton Johnston. I got skinny Des Bryant vibes from him, but I don't know if 10 is where he'll end up on my board when it's all said and done. Or, or excuse me, in the top 10. At number 10... Miles Murphy, the Clemson edge rusher. A lot of these guys are already announcing their, their pro declarations. Murphy among them. He moves up one spot. No complaints. He'll probably be a top 10 pick because of the talent and, of course, the value of an edge rusher. Today's show is made possible by LinkedIn Talent Solutions. And the NFL draft is all about making new hires. And especially early on, it's a pretty massive high-stakes wager. And it often feels like that, too, for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. They help you find the right people for your team faster and for free. Uh, NFL scouts watching, unfortunately, not quite applicable for the NFL draft. But if you're hiring for your small business, LinkedIn Jobs is the way to go. 
easy to create a post. We've hired some people here at Chat Sports through LinkedIn Talent Solutions with fantastic results so far. You can add your job and the hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile. It helps spread the word that you're looking to add people. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you want to interview and eventually hire. This, the calendar year is winding down. So if you're making a hire for your small business, it is critical that you actually get the right person in. And that is why LinkedIn Jobs helps you accomplish that. It's why small businesses rank LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash NFL daily. That's linkedin.com slash NFL daily to post your job for free. All right, back to Kuiper's big board here. Number 11, Tyree Wilson, who I think he might go earlier than that. He's going to test really well, big freaky size guy. He moves up four spots, and I think there's still room for a rise for Wilson this year. Brian Brzee is sticking at 12, and I actually think this is about right for him. Uh, the, the traits are there. The production has never been quite what you wanted, so there is some risk there. That's why he's not a, contens a consensus top three player in a, despite the upside. I think that's fine for Brzee. My guy, Michael Mayer, falls down five spots. It's tight end. And I will make note, tight ends often struggle adjusting to life in the NFL because the blocking is a lot more challenging, and the athletic ability is much higher. And Mayer's not going to test off the charts. And that, I think, will drop him down to probably the back half of, of round one in the actual draft. But he is as reliable as they come. I'm a huge fan of his game. 14, Paris Johnson. He was four and then fell all the way down. Or he's, sorry, he's staying at 14. My bad. Staying at, at uh, 14 there for Paris Johnson. Excuse me. I had a typo. A good left tackle prospect. Made the move over there with no Olu Fashinu from Penn State, which breaks my heart because he didn't come out. God, I got many Tyron Smith vibes from that guy. Johnson will potentially be the first tackle off the board. Here's your next receiver, Jordan Addison, who I think from a route running, there is some Stephon Diggs in his game. I don't think he's quite the same high-end eventual player. I mean, if you thought you were getting Stephon Diggs, you'd take him number five. But he's going to be a good player for you. You can go some underneath stuff and downfield stuff. You can make a real argument that Addison, playing with Kenny Pickett, helped him become a first-round pick, and Caleb Williams, too, is the best receiver in this year's draft class. Who do you think it is? We've got some more names we'll get to, including the very next player on this list. But I want to hear from you guys first. Who is the best wide receiver prospect in the 2023 NFL Draft? Number 16 is Zay Flowers. And I am intrigued uh, that Kuyper, as we are now, by the way, very much in a they weren't ranked last time and now they are stage of his big board. I like Flowers, uh, but he's also been a bit of a known commodity at Boston College for years. I don't think he played wildly out of the previous years he's done. I think he's more of a top 50 guy than a borderline top 15 player. But he is a, a potential late round one pick, so I, I'm glad he got some love from Mel. I think it's a touch high for me. Joey Porter Jr. stays in the top 20. That is the son of Pittsburgh Steelers legend Joey Porter. He's 17, but I do think that Mel is still too low on Christian Gonzalez, the Oregon corner who checks in at number 18 on this list. Gonzalez might be the number one corner when it's all said and done. He was not ranked last time. Mel getting caught up here. A little bit. That's how the media works. We're always behind on who the NFL actually likes, who the best prospects are, etc. Gonzalez, number 18. Now, I think previously, Kuiper did not have Anthony Richardson on there, same way I did not in my mock drafts because I didn't know if he was going to turn pro. He has turned pro. Anthony Richardson, the the evaluation is not that challenging, right? He, he's got all the traits you want, a cannon for an arm, a ridiculous athlete, elite size. It's how does he handle the, the mental processing aspect that is oh so important in the NFL. Does he make the right decisions on the read options, which they, teams will want to utilize for him but I don't think he was that great of instincts at Florida. Is he there in the most important couple inches between uh, for an NFL player that's between your ears? There's elite talent there. If he hits the top five quarterback, or he's out of the league in four years like Paxton Lynch was, there's a lot of variation there, not making that the, the, the player comparison. So the eval is not that hard. The pros and cons are obvious. Where you value that player, the, the, the valuation, as opposed to the eval, is very challenging. So feel free to chime in. What round should Anthony Richardson be drafted in? If you're running an NFL organization, what round are you taking Richardson in? Is it first, second, third, fourth? Where? Sound off in the comments section. 
Number 20, also not ranked last time, Brian Branch, the Bama kind of safety nickel overhang defender, more and more popular in the modern-day NFL. I think he'll be a first-round pick when it's all said and done. Surprise name, Deontay Banks out of Maryland. Uh, Kuiper is always good for a few surprises, and this is the one that kind of surprised me the most. He did declare early, and I could see him being a relatively early draft pick, but I I'm not there on top 25. I, I got better corners on this list and off this list we're going to get to before Banks. Andre Carter II, the edge from Army. There's going to be an actual Army top 50 draft pick, folks. Let that sink in for a second. He will be NFL eligible, by the way. They've kind of reverted to some of, the, some of their rules. Uh, he was 18 last time. He just simply wasn't as productive this year. But teams love edge rushing talent, so I don't hate that one. I like Broderick Jones being here at number 23. Teams crave offensive line talent. Jones has had a nice year for Georgia. A lot of upside, too. He's there at number 23. Devin Witherspoon has, go look at his coverage numbers. You can DM me on Twitter at what going down. I'll send them to you. Insanely good. Didn't get beat, like, at all, and has a bunch of interceptions. You love to see it. Now, he's very skinny, and he's not that fast. And that's going to be a potential red flag there for Devin Witherspoon to figure out exactly where he ends up going. Is he a top 20 guy? Is he a top 50 guy? Finally, Keely Ringo, the other corner on this list, who I would also put over Deontay Banks. Sorry, Mr. Banks. Ringo's got upside traits prospect. The Georgia guys on defense have always been a bit more traits than full-fledged production, perhaps in part because... There's so much good talent on the defense that there can't be the same couple guys making plays over and over again. That's Kuyper's top 25. Is he a coward for not doing 32? People are talking. But who did Mel Kuyper leave off his 2023 NFL Draft big board? I'm going to break down some guys I think we should keep an eye out for, but I want to hear from you in the comments right now. Several corners and linebackers here. Clark Phillips, I'm, I think I'm going to be higher on him than most people, and I am fine with that. I was the same way with Roger McCreary last year. Undersized, great production at Utah. Trenton Simpson just turned pro. I think he was the th number three inside linebacker for Mel. I think he's got some great athletic ability. He's going to rise up. Cam Smith from South Carolina could be in the top 20 conversation. Jalen Hyatt, I would take over Zay Flowers because I want speed, and Hyatt brings speed in spades. Drew Sanders, the Bama transfer, had a fantastic year. He turns pro early. He's going to be a, a guy to watch top 50. Some more names, obviously defense heavy here. Antonio Johnson is in that Brian Branch mold, kind of a similar-ish corner or safety with what he's able to do on the field. Osiris Torrance is a fantastic road mauling right guard and is probably the best guard in this year's draft class. Two defensive ends, Jared Verse, who the Albany transfer was insanely good this year. And Lucas Van Ness kind of has some tweener traits with his size and athletic ability. I think he's a better athlete than, say, A.J. Epinesa was coming out of Iowa. And then you got to figure out what's gonna, going on with Nolan Smith. The injury could ding him, but the talent, like the Georgia players, is very much there. That is it for our latest NFL Draft video. If you want more, then make sure you guys are subscribed.